All right, welcome folks to Last Week I Learned. Today we are talking about home robots. So the inspiration for this week's theme was me seeing Tesla's robot. So I was just, I think, poking around at Tesla's taxi kind of project, and then I stumbled upon their robot, and I was wondering, like, how it's coming. And the short answer is badly. It is embarrassing to watch that demo video and compare it to any of Boston Dynamax videos. Now, there's some interesting things they're doing in the video this show. The robot handling an egg, which is pretty impressive. But that's what got me interested at first. Now, as I was writing this, I realized I've kind of been around this home robot space for a while. In college, I started a company with my, my friend Neil. And the goal was to build a smarter smoke detector using a combination of cameras and a sprinkler system that could target the fire. Now, what was funny is reflecting back, this was in 2016, almost a decade ago, part of the reason our startup died is nobody wanted a camera in their home. And so as I dove into this project again, I found it so fascinating that two products from Alexa, Astro, and the Always Home Ring Cam are literally just cameras. And it's wild how much our opinions have changed. Of course, there's still people who don't love it, but it's so much more widely accepted to have a camera around. So I want to dig in here and highlight a couple key things. Really, I'm just going to talk about a couple of theses I have and some things I, I found important that are going to be difficult to understand, but I want to break them down for you. So first, I think there's a big debate between are we going to have a general kind of robot that does everything? Or are we gonna have a host of specific robots that do one task? And what I find really interesting here is we already have a lot of robots in the home and Benedict Evans has this great phrase about AI, which is AI is anything that we haven't automated already. And so basically the AI of the past is just automation. And I think this applies here is a home robot is anything we haven't automated yet. Now, I think if you went back into the fifties and you showed someone even an, an oven, which has all kinds of electronics in it or a dishwasher or a laundry machine, they would say those are home robots. Even I would argue the nest thermostat is a home robot. And so I want to first lay out what a home robot is and what I'm considering it to be. So I think the home robot kind of of the future is connected, intelligent, and mobile. And I think the way I've been thinking about home robots and the way I see it now is that home robots are really connected and intelligent, right? So I differ a little bit from, I think, the mainstream perception of a home robot, like the one Tesla is building, where it's kind of doing everything in its mobile moving from place to place. Now there's a couple interesting concepts here that I, that I found. One is the idea of the home being a robot, right? So I think taken to its extreme, it's really interesting to think about a home that reconfigures itself. I saw this at a museum near me where they actually allowed the furniture to convert from a bed to a couch and really change the style and layout of a room, that would be super fun. I can kind of imagine, you know, having a party setting where it takes your kitchen and makes it open concept and maybe it, you know, compresses your bedrooms while you're not using them so there's more space. Like there's all these interesting things we could do if the home was a robot. So that's a, that's a fun tangent. I think another tangent here is the home robot not staying in one place. And I think so. One kind of potential future I found interesting was what if we brought the delivery robots inside and we're comfortable with them in public spaces, but we're not comfortable with them in the home and they're not designed to be in the home. But I think there's a plausible future where we kind of send things on assignment or rent them out which is really interesting. So 
there's all these really strange kind of ways of imagining a smart home and a smart home robot. One of the things that I found concerning as I thought more about this is robots have done really well in factories and those have a lot of market penetration there. And the reason for that is it's very defined and consistent and there's not a lot of surprises in a factory and that's by design. And I think that's part of the reason delivery robots and autonomous cars have taken off much faster than home robots. It's kind of surprising, but I think folding laundry is in some ways a more difficult task than an autonomous car. Our public spaces are, if you live in a city like Pittsburgh, you know, they're not necessarily consistent and clean, but they are better defined than many homes are. And things are in the same place. Generally, if a street is in one place one day, it's in the same place the next, right? But our homes, are really chaotic. Things are constantly moving. And it's very difficult, I think, for us to understand how hard it is to understand our homes and to program for them, right? Even when I think about home automation, one of the things I'm considering is I bought a smart plug and it controls my devices. And I was like, well, I would love to have some kind of automation for that. So when I leave the house, you know, I want it to turn on. But even then, there's all these complexities of sometimes when I leave the house, I don't want it off. Or could I set up a schedule of sorts where, you know, the smart plug is off during different parts of the day? And this kind of leads me, I think, to the highest level of a home robot and home automation is that you don't have to do any of the setup. So one of the articles I read made the argument that we are not in a home automation space. We are really, or I think it was an argument that our homes are not intelligent yet. They may be automated, but they're not intelligent. An automated home would be one that observes your patterns and then just does stuff. Kind of, you can see Siri starting to do this where it's like, do you want to make a phone call? You usually order an Uber around this time. Is that something you want to do? And I think we're going to start to see this more and more often. I think the Nest thermostat does a pretty good job of this. And I actually am trying to snag one of those because of that, because I don't have to think about how to maximize the efficiency of my air conditioning. But, um, all right, so I've drifted into smart homes and I want to come back to home robots, right? So the core problem here is that homes are really complicated and the technology we're trying to use to create home robots is also super complex. So. If you think about it, a home robot needs some kind of battery system. It's probably going to be using computer vision. It needs to be able to handle things in a really gentle way, which is surprisingly hard, right? Again, in a factory, you don't really have to worry about this quite as much. In a home, it's very, very important that everyone is safe and you have all these chaotic elements running around. So I think part of the reason home robots have been so elusive is one, we didn't have good enough AI and it was really difficult for a robot to handle such an inconsistent environment without AI. And then two, a lot of these components were just not good enough. I remember when I was working on my look detector startup all of those years ago, thermal cameras were terrible and they've come a long way in, you know, almost a decade. So I think we're, we're going to see more and more home robots as a result probably of the electric car revolution and the smartphone revolution that have brought costs down for cameras and batteries. So it's interesting to see those two connected. Now, the final thing I want to talk about here is what I see as the core problem of home robots and home automation, and that is connectivity. So my friend Neil Weeda and I thought about this a long time ago. And the question was, what if there was Wi-Fi everywhere? And I think what's interesting is we're getting there, right? 5G networks are pretty good. We have Starlink becoming a reality. But one of the challenges is this goes even farther. How do you have connectivity within a home, right? This becomes really difficult. And what I'm starting to see is Homes are becoming like more like businesses it used to be like the, the office, right? With remote work, we've literally had offices move into our homes, but 
you almost need an IT department to run your home. And that is where this gets tricky with home robots is how do you ensure you have good enough Wi-Fi to ensure access around the whole house? Now, the problem here is let's say you've got your Roomba running around and it turns a corner and it's out of range of the Wi-Fi. Like it could get stuck there. And for a Roomba, that's fine. But if you have this super powerful generalized robot, that becomes much more problematic. And this is where kind of, I think the smart home and the home robot intersect. One of the things that some folks are doing is they're using smart speakers as repeaters. So I think this could become more and more normalized to have smart speakers. Speakers, a lot of us already do. I have a home pod. I know lots of people enjoy their Google homes or Amazon echoes. I think those are going to become routers and routers are going to become smart speakers and they're going to act as a centralized smart hub that includes Wi-Fi. And I think you're going to see what they call mesh networks, which are like lots of routers around the home to spread out the Wi-Fi. I think you're going to see those become ubiquitous as we have more and more connected devices. And honestly, it makes me want to start a consulting business, just setting up the homes, like smart homes. This has changed so much. I mean, I remember when this was an idea. I think when I was in high school, I did a presentation on LED light bulbs. And those were like state of the art at the time. This was like 2012, so like more than a decade ago. And now we have smart bulbs. I couldn't have even imagined that as a high schooler. So this is one of those things where it's done and created, but it's not evenly distributed. And I think we're going to see the distribution of these smart homes grow and it's going to create a lot of problems in terms of security, right? We're going to have more and more trouble securing these networks. It's going to be more and more difficult to set them up and get reliability. So I think there's going to be a kind of rush of people who step in and fill the gap with their expertise. So I think that's interesting. Now, I want to wrap up with talking about protocols, very exciting stuff. I think this is the hardest part to understand about home robots and home automation is it's not as simple as Wi-Fi. And this is where it's kind of make or break. The power of a smart home is that it's connected and unobtrusive and you don't have to do anything. You can automate stuff. Now, as I said, that's a really hard problem to solve and people have built out protocols with terrible names. I think one is ZBs or ZBeev, another one is ZBug or something like that, horrible names. And they built these protocols to try to help smooth out the communication between devices and to plan for contingencies like if the Wi-Fi goes out. But they're really tricky to understand. Now, luckily, Google, Apple, Amazon, and a couple other big players have created one centralized protocol, which is really nice. I didn't have to buy any particular smart plug. I just bought one that was what's called matter compatible. And it worked with my Apple home right out of the box. And that was super smooth. And I think I'm really lucky because I imagine five or 10 years ago, it was even more complicated, but these protocols are really important because they allow interactivity between different devices. Now, there's also some concern around matter being less secure. That's what we're going to find, unfortunately, is these huge security risks that businesses have been seeing. Like there was a casino that was hacked because they had a smart fish tank. Those are going to move into the home. And the problem here is if you can get onto one device, if you can access my smart plug, you can jump onto other devices in the network. And I really... I think my biggest takeaway here is we're going to see the home requiring an IT department basically to keep running. And these companies are doing the best they can to keep things simple and getting these set up is much easier than before. Thanks to the matter protocol, which allows, you know, Apple home, Google home and all the rest to connect to all these devices, but the security risks are going to get bigger and bigger. And also we're going to be more and more screwed 
if we have a power outage or if our Wi-Fi is disrupted. So I think we're moving some of these risks that we maybe thought about in terms of business and companies into the home. And I think things are going to get very complicated. Now, it's going to be five or 10 years before these technologies are really distributed out to the public. I was really shocked by one of the articles I read, which I recommend. It's one of the three recommended articles in the deep dive, which you can find linked. This person had their smart home set up so well, and it was sounded like something out of the Jetsons, right? They'd wake up, their lights would turn on automatically when their alarm went off. S like soft music would start playing, coffee would start, they would head downstairs, their bedroom lights would turn off, their downstairs lights would turn on. It was wild. The, the thermostat would adjust up from the morning temperature. Like everything was coordinated and seamless. And it's possible now. It's just hard. And I think we're going to see it go from hard to normal in the next five to 10 years. But we're going to see these downsides in terms of security really bite people because it's not as clear that they're there. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I was excited by this one. If you have kind of ideas about smart homes that you'd like to talk about, please feel free to hit me up. You can leave comments and I will look them over. Thank you so much for joining me.